It's you, YouTube. What are you still doing here? All right, it's morning time. We've already made horrifyingly bad and desperate love to one another. What the f are you still doing here? You know what this was. I've already left the money on the dresser. All right, I don't pay for you to run your cheeks. I pay for you to leave afterwards. Now you, now you get, now you, now you, but it is YouTube. It's your boy, Blast Miss HD. Everybody's surrogate baby's father, you know. Uh, and today we're here to react to a video that I saw in trending and it, for some reason hit near and dear to me, mostly because I used to dabble in uh, crime a tad bit when I was uh, younger. <laughs> Wasn't that long ago, it was probably about, probably about 15 years ago. 15, somewhere 15, 10 years ago. Uh, so this video hit close to home, near and dear on the inside of my hearts because I tried burglary when I was younger and I wasn't good at it. That's, that's why I stopped. It just didn't go that good. <laughs> didn't really get a lot of stuff. <laughs> so uh, as a bit of a treat, at the end of this video, I shall tell you a story of one of the two times. I think it was only two times, might have been a couple more. I definitely remember two of the stories, but I'll be telling you guys one of the stories of when I burgled a house and it did not end well. <laughs> but before we start the video, I'll give all of the impressionable youngsters who are watching this video a bit of life advice. Don't do crime. The reason why I stopped. Number one, it is the lowest paying career choice ever. Number two, doing bad to people who don't deserve it, it keeps you broke and poor. Karmic repercussion and whatnot, you know, read books. And three, I don't remember. So if you guys want to watch the original video, I believe the link is in the description down below. It is called Inside the Mind of a Thief, Burglar Confessions. Man, there are a lot of really good documentaries. Let's do this. <laughs> nah, but for real though, money is on the dresser. Get the fuck out of my house, YouTube. The sex is over. I don't know why you're still here. You know, but but also we're gonna we're gonna watch this video. For 20 years, Michael Shane Durden burglarized hundreds of homes across Calvin and Dallas counties until the white folk got him. He has spent his life learning how to break into homes to find and steal thousands of dollars worth of possessions. Bruh, you know if you had to put this same amount of effort into building an actual legitimate career, you would make way more money? Same thing I did. That's real. I took all the effort I was putting into doing foolishness and stupidness and trying to come up the back of attractive females and I put that into building a career and getting this legitimate money. It can be done, people. I am literally proof. If you met me 15 years ago, <laughs> you'd look at me and be like, there's no way this nigga can make anything above minimum wage. Hell, I'm pretty sure a lot of people still think that still even today, which is the reason why a lot of YouTubers was mad at your boy because I was out here doing well, living happily, being successful, and getting this money. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I gotta react to some of them videos too. That is the greatest thing ever. But uh, but yeah, yeah. Mr. Durden, how are you today, sir? Mm. He was getting away with it, which we always oh, is, until he was called by Island and Plano PD. I didn't get caught, but he was facing 20 to 30 years in jail. He didn't get 20 to 30 years? What you are about to see is an exclusive jailhouse interview with Mr. Durden. He tells what homeowners can do to protect their property from thieves. Nigga, I'm trying to look at this to find out how I can burgle. I'm trying to learn to burgle again, baby. I live in the suburbs, nigga, I'm bored. This shit's going too good right now, man. I need to get back to prison. 
Horrible joke. I never go back. I did like four months in jail. I didn't do a whole lot of prison time. Luckily enough for me, I'd, I'd hate to have to fight for my cheeks. Let's do this. When you consider a neighborhood, is there something that you're looking for in that neighborhood that would pique your interest? Asian people. Yes, sir, there are. There are several things uh, approaching a neighborhood from a criminal perspective that you look for, key things. First and foremost, I look for settled homes because uh, people who uh, are of a socioeconomic status should be able to afford a particular type of home usually have disposable wealth income. Mm -hmm. Mean, and meaning from my perspective that they have jewelry or ready cash that's available to be taken. Mm -hmm. um, middle class homes get hit less in burglaries just because of that. From me, anyway, from my perspective. Um, in a neighborhood, I'm, I'm looking for well-kept homes, yards with really nice fences. Mm -hmm. Because if you can afford a $10,000 fence to go around your home, then uh, I'm sure the inside of your home is very nice, too. Uh, the things that will keep me from going into your home like that are uh, Dogs. easily displayed. Um, a lot of alarm systems these days, uh, they have availability of being wireless. Mm -hmm. The reason that they do that is because it's easy for an individual to walk to the outside of a person's home and pull the wires out from the box mm -hmm. uh, that goes to the alarm system that's wired into the telephone system. Mm -hmm. Cut those wires. If you cut the wires, even if you do trigger the alarm system, it's not going to send a message to the company. Mm -hmm. So you don't have to worry about it. But with a cellular system, that's not, that's not the case. Mm -hmm. With a cellular system, you have to, um, it's, a, it's a lot more inclusive and you, it's, it's hard to get the things that you need to defeat the system. It's really hard to find anybody selling a, a cell phone signal blocker. So, you know, um, the threat of just uh, have someone having wireless will make me step away from their home. Let but, me ask you this. Sure. People uh, often ask us, well, what about dogs? Uh, if I have a big dog that barks, is that a deterrent? I've wondered about dogs. Uh, sometimes it can be, uh, especially if they're extremely aggressive. Mm -hmm. um, but not always. Dogs can be a deterrent. But if you come to the front door and I knock on your front door, and just, just for personal knowledge, people that have these beautiful see-through front doors that I can see all the way through their house, that I can see from the front of their house to the back of their house, I can look from side to side into their home. Um, if their dog's barking or whatnot, and their dog's running around, no matter what size the dog, the dog is uh, going to understand that it's not the alpha male of the house. So it's going to run and try and find somebody if somebody's there. So sometimes a dog can be a telltale sign to me. Sometimes a, a dog will run and run over to a room and look and run back. And I'll know that that person's not answering the door, but they're home because the dog's not gonna do that under normal circumstances. Damn, I never thought about this. This dude is informational and analytical. Unfortunately for people who don't wanna be burglarized, but you know, it's good information for me. I... Uh, unless it's a really, really big dog that's really, really aggressive. My MO was I would disconnect the alarm system. Sometimes there would be a dog and sometimes I would go up to the window and put my hand out just to see what the dog would do. If it's an extremely small dog, it's not a deterrent, period. Um, but a large dog that's real aggressive, it's going to make me think, do I really want to wrestle with this dog and have to spray him and still risk being bitten by a spray dog who's really mad at me? That, that sometimes can be a deterrent. Let me ask you this on the same neighborhood question. Yes, sir. Uh, there's usually two things that come up. The dogs, which I think you've covered well. Um, what about a nosy neighbor? If you're going through a neighborhood, and you see someone, you know, looking out the window at you, or maybe they walk out their front door to, to look at you. Is that a deterrent? Oh, most certainly. Way? I applaud the efforts of Neighborhood Watch because there have been so many times that I've gone and cased a neighborhood and stayed away from that neighborhood because it was obvious to me that there were people out walking, that they had the VIP program, mm -hmm. um, and it makes a lot of difference. It will totally deter me from even going anywhere near that neighborhood. Really? Uh, yes, sir. Because 
I don't want ever to enter into a situation where I'm confronted by anyone. Mm -hmm. So that's the whole reason of uh, casing the homes. I'm not a home invader who would go in and tie people up. Mm -hmm. I'm a thief. I'm not proud to say that, but that's what I am. <laughs> Hope you keep it real as fuck. Hey, look, hey, look, hey, 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 look. I'm here to steal. I don't kill. Remind me of Azale off of Friday. <laughs> I steal. I don't kill. That's what's up. I can respect that. Empty their mailboxes. People need to have their neighbors pick their older newspapers up out of the lawn. Um, even if they're not there, they, for most burglars, I, I won't go in a home that doesn't look manicured because I don't believe that the people there have the money to manicure the lawn, mm -hmm. therefore they don't have expo expendable income. Mm -hmm. But if you're in a neighborhood that's uh, median income probably 250000 between the spouses a year mm -hmm. and the yard's not manicured, I just think they're on vacation mm -hmm. and I will go to that house. Mm -hmm. So picking up the, the mail, making sure that your neighbors take care of it. Also, like um, with their trash cans and stuff, instead of pulling their trash like on trash day, that's mm -hmm. like a big thing. You can go through and see who's home and who's not just by the trash being there or not mm -hmm. uh, by driving down the alley and looking. Mm -hmm. um, that's a big thing. Damn. From my perspective, I'm, I'm a personal trainer. That's what I did besides crime. Mm -hmm. I jog a lot. Mm -hmm. So it would be nothing for me to go through the neighborhood and not be noticed. I mean, I have tattoos, but I wear long sleeve shirts that wick moisture, so you really can't see my tattoos. Mm -hmm. If you stop me, my vernacular is not that of the common criminal. Mm -hmm. So with that said, I would case neighborhoods on foot mm -hmm. by jogging or walking and uh, look at homes. And the homes that I'm looking for specifically have mail, specifically have newspapers. They're unkept uh, to a specific level, depending on the neighborhood. The front of the house, I'm looking for alarm systems that I know I can defeat that aren't wireless. Mm -hmm. If they're wireless, I'm not even going to attempt it. I'm not going to waste my time um, because there's going to be a response extremely quick and I was parking my vehicle a mile away and uh, I can't run a mile in four minutes like some people can. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I, I would be on the officer's radar, mm -hmm. you know, jogging away from the home with, with valuables. Mm -hmm. But the front of the house, versus the back of the house. The front of the house, I'm looking for visual pathways. What I mean by that is being able to see through the front windows into the home mm -hmm. or from, uh, from the street at that, or from the sidewalk, rather. And if I notice that there's, there's not very many lights on in the home or any lights on in the home, I'm going to walk up to the front door and knock on the front door versus ringing the doorbell. Now I'm going to knock and knock and knock until it's just pestering to make sure nobody's there. But in the process of doing that, I'm looking through the glass windows uh, and those really beautiful doors that I mentioned earlier. Mm -hmm. And um, I'm paying attention to uh, reflections and shadows inside the home. You can't do that when there's lights on in the home. I mean, I know that neighborhood watch tell people you need to keep a light on your home when you're not there. And that's true because it's a deterrent. But don't put the light on in the front room right by the window. Mm -hmm. Put the light on in the center of your home where it's not easily seen because you may be a person may be occupied with the internet or television or movie or headphones. And if I can't see shadows coming from that light, it makes me weary. And I don't do nighttime burglaries. I do daytime burglaries, but you can still see into a person's home. Damn, bro, I thought burglaries went down at night. See, this just goes to show why I didn't do crime a lot. Because I wasn't good at it. I didn't even do my homework. I ain't willing to study and stuff. I ain't sure that the money I make, I'm going to be able to comfortably get pulled over by the police without shitting myself when they ask me where I'm going to. I don't really want to do it. Home see light. Mm -hmm. It makes me as a burglar weary to go into that home. Mm -hmm. So that's a really good deterrent. But just not in the front. Because if you're in the front and I can look and see your light source, and I can look at the light and knock on your door, and nobody comes, and I know they just turned the light on because they're not home. Right. Yeah, it makes sense. Right. Do you look, uh, does it have anything to do if there's vehicles in the driveway or in the garage? Or yes, sir. I'd spoken with uh, a detective about that, particularly if I see a vehicle parked in the driveway or in front of the home, I'm most certainly not going there. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, it's a waste of my time. Why would I do that when people that aren't home generally don't park their cars in front of their homes? Right. And as I said, I didn't want to come into contact with anyone. Um, yeah, that's a major deterrent. Also, there's, there's small appliances that people can buy that are timers. They can turn their lights off and on. They can turn a stereo off and on. They can turn a television off and on. They can turn a pre-recorded noise of your choice, your voice, uh, your dog barking, uh, any of that on. Uh, that's a very good device and it's very useful because if I come to your door and I knock on your door and it has a, a, a ultrasound or sonic, whatever it's called, a detector on it, mm -hmm. and it sets it off when you knock on the door, who is it, right? I'm like, well, I'm, lots of times I'll walk away from the door before anybody even gets there because I don't want to be seen. Mm -hmm. So it would deter me from actually going to that home. Mm -hmm. I know you say you want to look to see, you know, across the house from the front oh, to yes, the sir. rear. Once you feel comfortable uh, that there's not a dog in the house and there's nobody home, what's your next uh, step in the process? I'm looking for registration to the city for their alarm. I'm looking for their permits, which will be stuck around their front door on the glass 90% of the time, or one of their front windows. That permit tells me that their alarm system is up to date and that it's connected directly, not through a company, but directly to a police station. So if I make any error in my judgment in what I'm doing and that alarm goes off, there's going to be officers there almost immediately. That will deter me because just so many other people that are homeowners, uh, See, I want you guys to watch this. Everybody think that it's ill-spoken black people and African-Americans that speak in slang like I tend to do from time to time that's out here robbing houses when it's the well-spoken white people that's been doing it the whole damn time. He said it himself in the beginning. Game, I'm jogging out the neighborhood. People ask me what I'm doing there. I'm well-spoken, so they don't even realize that I'm there to steal all of the booty. And I don't mean butt cheeks and rape. I'm talking about pirates booty. That, that, that's not better. I, when I say pirates, but I mean gold, jewelry, diamonds, pirates of the Caribbean type of loot, that type of butt, you know, booty, uh, uh, treasure chests of butt. Get that first year of alarm system for free and then don't never pay on it again because they figure I'll never get my house broke into. And they do. At some point, you're going to you're going to transition from the front of the house to the rear of the house. Yes, sir. Uh, it, when you do that, how do you uh, approach from the rear without drawing undue attention to your approach? Take a trash can with you. Hmm. Sometimes I'll jog a street over and look through a cut through uh, several houses up mm -hmm. and then jog down the alley mm -hmm. and um, I already have counted how many houses it is down the alley and um, I'll look to see whether or not they have their fence locked and if they do I'll just climb their fence mm -hmm. or flip over their fence so and do it as speedily as I can mm -hmm. so that people don't see me but that's always a thing if you have neighborhood watch and people are aware of what's going on around them if I'm going down the alley and I see anybody that's a deterrent I'm not even going to that house that I just case that I know nobody's home in mm -hmm. because this person may have seen me. I would go jog back to my vehicle and drive to a totally different neighborhood mm -hmm. because of that. Um, it's very hard to get around neighborhood wise. It's excessively um, straining to try and outmaneuver them. Mm -hmm. I was jogging through, um, I'm not going to name the neighborhood, but I was jogging through a neighborhood and I immediately became aware that there was neighborhood watch and they didn't know me mm -hmm. so they were looking at me because they're out there every day and they know their neighbors and they know who's on their street mm -hmm. and as i was jogging through i was like well that's neighborhood watch <laughs> they're watching me right so mm -hmm. and they didn't make it obvious but i knew who it was mm -hmm. and so i jogged jogged down another street and i saw the same person again and i said well they're watching me so i need to leave i would most certainly spend hours out casing and preparing beforehand mm -hmm. Um, the best criminals do. You gotta put the work in. I mean, I shouldn't, no one should be telling you this given it's crime, but if you're gonna do something, you wanna be the best at it. I actually learned this from watching The Wire. Especially if you're doing crime, 
You want to show up to a job at least an hour and a half early. You never want to be the last person to the crime. That goes doubly if you're showing up to, uh, to give somebody the wet work. I mean, you know. Walking those alleys, uh, being seen. People could have looked out there and seen me four or five times in the same alley in a day and become suspicious of that and called the police and told them, hey, this guy's been in my alley three times a day and he doesn't live over here. And that would have deterred me. That would have killed everything that I was doing, all the hours that I had invested into getting acquainted with that area. And, you know, nobody did. From your experience, there's still a lot of people that don't pay sufficient attention to what's going on in their neighborhood. Most people in the neighborhoods, cul-de-sacs, yes. Because, I mean, it's inevitable that you see everybody every day in a cul-de-sac. But in a linear street design, no. You don't know who your neighbors are for the most part. Five All right, y'all. We're going to have to break this up into parts because this video is long as shit. So this will be part one. And in part three, I'll tell y'all the story of my shady dealings back in my younger years. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. There's a bit of a look into some of the, 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 the terror the terrible shit that 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 they doing you know what i'm saying uh twisms mm -hmm.